Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me today from Fitchburg Firehouse number three, two, two. one, two. It's Adam Dorn, Fitchburg Fire Department. Adam, uh, welcome back to the show and uh, glad you're out at station number don't say. Uh, glad, uh, glad you're here as uh, we get into uh, the daylight savings time. Just something in the, I can't remember off the top of my head, something about the fire department, smoke detectors and time of year. I don't, maybe it's something we should talk about since I don't remember it. What do yeah. you think? I think it's a, it's a good idea. I think it's a real good idea. Yeah, as uh, as we do, uh, uh, and I think something that's been uh, a staple of like stop, drop, and roll, <laughs> and um, fire extinguishers is is changing and checking your smoke alarms at daylight savings. And uh, this year, I'm going to throw a lot of tough questions at you, so uh, I hope you're prepared because <clears throat> I am. Red, blue, and yellow. All right, <laughs> well, that's over my pay grade. I have no clue. Uh, uh, in all seriousness, uh, why why do we even check these smoke detectors? What are we looking for? Well, let, let's start with this. Um, according to FEMA, three out of every five home deaths, every every time there's a whole uh, death in a home, it results from fires in properties where there were no working smoke alarms that's why it's so important that's a yeah it's a startling statistic and there has been a lot more uh, fire fatalities uh, this year uh, and uh, i'm waiting to see what that total number is uh, given we were at home so you know corresponds with being at home um, uh, in fires but uh, it seems like deaths were up too uh, the smoke alarm uh, such a, a vital vital piece and uh, something so simple and so forgotten, but uh, yet so uh, so important. Uh, what are we checking for when we uh, when we definitely go into uh, this time of year? Well, one of the, the the big thing that we're checking is to make sure that they work. Um, a lot of times they're in homes and people don't check them, or uh, they don't test them to make sure that the batteries are still active. That's the big thing. We want them to make. We want people to make sure that the smoke detectors work, because, like that statistic said, you know, we've got three out of every five people that die at home fire don't have working smoke detectors. That's your one thing to make sure that you can get out in a timely fashion. The only other thing that's better than a smoke detector is a sprinkler system, and if you have both of them, that's even better. Yeah, the chances probably increase for uh, for for not only your safety but uh, property damage as well. Um, so something we've talked about in the past, and I know this seems like could be a redundant in some ways because we talk about it so much, but so important is that smoke alarms don't last forever. <laughs> and, and I think that has been a huge message, especially uh, since you and I started doing this to, to get that out more. So. You know, it's one thing to check the batteries, but what about checking the dates on it and where are we looking for those? That's a great point, Jeremy. So smoke detectors do not last forever. Um, we've been in many homes here in Fitchburg that there's still the original smoke detectors from when the uh, house was built. Um, smoke detectors only last for about 10 years. After 10 years, you should be replacing them. And it doesn't matter if it's a standalone where it's a battery operated one or if it's hardwired where you have it uh, interconnected with other smoke detectors in the building. Um, they only last about 10 years and that's best case scenario. That's if you're checking them monthly, you're cleaning them out like you're supposed to according to the manufacturer's recommendations. That, those are the big things. Yeah, the cleaning one, uh, something you brought to my attention uh, when we were talking about this last month, uh, or well, this month, I guess, earlier this month in the fire safety uh, uh, week, um, you know, it's it's very interesting to me that the manufacturer <laughs> says, you know, that you do need to clean these out. It, again, it's something out of sight, out of mind that, uh, that you wouldn't uh, necessarily know. What about if you, on top of the cleaning, if you have one near the kitchen area and it's gone off many times <laughs> because of the, the style of cooking you're doing uh is is it one of those like uh if it's it if you've used it once should it get put away or a new you know get a new one essentially what's the what's the standard there yeah so 
the standard is that we're not, we don't want one in the kitchen itself, just for that reason, because there's steam in there. You might have some smoke from time to time if you're not paying attention to what you're cooking or something gets away from you, right? You, you, those kinds of things are expected. So it's not required to have a smoke detector in the kitchen. But there should be one nearby, maybe in the next room or just off in the hallway. Um, those are the places that it would be uh, more beneficial to have it. Um, but if you've had one in the kitchen and it has been going off and it's very sensitive, I would replace it. It would be beneficial for you to replace it. And then when you do replace it, maybe change the location of it so it's not in the kitchen. Like I said, maybe in the room adjacent to it or down the hallway a little bit from it. That is probably your best bet. Let's talk about placement. So if you are looking at adding more, um, what, is the, what is the rule uh, for uh, smoke detectors uh, in the house? So it all depends on when your house was built. Uh, some of the older homes, the code only requires a smoke detector outside of the sleeping areas and one on every floor of your home. So in some cases, that could mean there's only two or three. I know in my parents' house where I grew up, there were two smoke detectors, one outside the bedrooms in the hallway and one in the at the bottom of the steps in the basement. That was it. That was that. Um, I put in a couple more now for them just to make sure that they were a little bit better protected. Um, nowadays, um, they all need to be interconnected. Um, so they actually all talk to each other. If one goes off, they all go off. Um, and there's not only do you still need to put one on every floor of your, your residence outside of your sleeping area, but there's also a requirement for one to go in each bedroom or each, uh, yeah, each bedroom inside that sleeping area. So if you have three bedrooms and you have a ranch house, a single story house, three bedrooms on the main level, and you have a basement, you actually need five smoke detectors one for each of the bedrooms, one outside the bedroom in the hallway, and then one on the lower level. And do we want these placed uh, on the ceiling still, or, you know, do they should they be up high? Should they be, um, you know, we've got the combination with the carbon monoxide, so maybe people are like, well, maybe I should put it lower. You know, how, what uh, what is the standard there? Yeah, great question again. Um, so smoke detectors should be placed on the ceiling. They should not be placed like directly above the door. That's one of the worst places to put one because the smoke, while it does go up, it doesn't follow the exact pattern of the wall. So three to four feet inside of the room from the door is, is good, but they should be placed on the ceiling. If you have a vaulted ceiling, it's always best to put it at the highest point. Yes, that makes it a little bit of a pain to replace the batteries You're, and all that stuff. Yeah, I hope you're coming over to do that in my vaulted ceiling because I can't reach it. <laughs> but that is where the smoke is going to go. That's where it's going to travel. So it makes sense to do it that way. Absolutely. And I'm glad you talked about the interconnected. I was sharing with you that uh, there are companies out there that sell uh, what I would call... Um, noise detectors so they they don't have they, the smart technology you know you you can be alerted to your phone that your smoker um co is going off but uh these ones uh, are listening for the uh, smoke detector uh, good or bad um what what would be your initial thought on that and and placement uh, of those um I personally haven't had any experience with them. I haven't researched them a whole lot. Um, I know they exist. Personally, I still think the best way to go is a smoke detector and a carbon monoxide detector at the least. Um, these other types of devices, while they work, um, you know, and I know some of them have, have the capability to send notices to your phone and this, that, and the other thing, which is great, but it also gives people an opportunity to just kind of go, oh, yeah, it's that again. They can, because in some of these instances, you can silence the alarm and never leave your room and not know something really is happening. Because a lot of these smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors, it does not take much for the particles in the air to actually set off 
his detectors. You guys uh, do, uh, uh, the fire department do, do respond to quite a few alarms, um, uh, give or take. Not, the, not a bad thing by any means, but uh, definitely uh, I, that is a very good perspective there that uh, if you silence it once, twice, and then 10 times over is that, you know, having the traditional still probably pays off uh, big time. Adam, thank you so much for going over all of this. Uh, certainly, if more people want to find resources, where would you recommend they go? Yeah. There's a number of places you can start by going to our website, which is fitchburgwi.gov forward slash fire. And if you look at the public education section of our website, there are uh, numerous links there that take you to different safety topics. Some of the other big places to go would be nfpa.org. And uh, you can also check out uh, ufa.fema.gov and look at the fire prevention and safety stuff there. Those are, the, those are my go-to places when I'm looking for stuff. Um, and they have spectacular material. Yeah, that's where we uh, got some of our stuff, uh, some of the points we were talking about today. So uh, nice to always have your perspective. Thank you so much. Stay safe out there. And uh, please, everybody, uh, do check those uh, smoke detectors and CO detectors. Uh, check those alarms uh, as uh, we do, uh, uh, well, we're going backwards, aren't we? We are going Getting backwards. darker. We got an extra hour of 2020 this year. <laughs> oh, no, not more, not more. <laughs> Dorn, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Stay safe out there, and we'll catch you up, uh, catch with, catch up with you next time. All right. Yeah, some, something something like that. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know why he keeps coming back. All right, uh, Adam Dorn, Fitcher Fire Department. Always a pleasure. Take a quick break. More to come. You're watching TF.